I started the week off by sewing myself a dress because I was not about to go and buy a new one and also I found a beautiful fabric in Congo Jungle Outlet which you may have seen in my previous vlog if you haven't I'll link it down below. I decided to use a fun technique called ruching where you hand wind the bottom bobbin with an elastic thread and use a regular thread on the top so when you stitch your fabric automatically gets gathered. It happens because the top thread which is not stretchy creates tension and stretches out the bottom elastic thread. This technique is pretty interesting because you can automatically make a stretchy fabric out of a non-stretchy one which is exactly what I did in here. I was aiming to create a bodycon dress with puffy sleeves because I really wanted to explore this style and I don't have anything similar in my wardrobe. If you want to repeat this technique definitely hand wind the bobbin with an elastic thread. Don't even try winding it on a machine because it's going to stretch out your elastic thread and it's not going to perform the same way when you actually start sewing. I've tried it before on foundation and we couldn't figure out why it wasn't working and obviously you had to hand wind it. Now I know but didn't know then so save yourself some time I think I may have found the suitable organza for look number five. This one is quite transparent without being too shiny and the nude color of it suits my project. I think I'm gonna buy half a meter of it, just test it out on my machine and see what finishes work. And if it does perform the same way as I expect it to, I will come back for more. starting the day off going to a sewing studio just to check out their equipment. Uh, besides my actual professional sewing machine which I can use at home, I still need an overlocker, a flat seam machine, so I would still go to a studio. But we found that I might be able to go to that studio where we got the sewing machine from. Uh, today after that sewing studio checkup, I'm gonna go to meet up with uh, my now employer actually. <laughs> I went on an interview a couple of days ago and we discussed what I could do for him and turns out that I can actually free Freelance and do some design work, construct mock-ups and sew the final pieces. So my first day is today. I'm going to be working for him, earning some side money, working on my degree collection simultaneously. It's going to be quite a challenge, but I think it's going to help me, motivate me and leave me no time for bullshit. So I'm going to have to work every hour that I have. Because I bought a second-hand machine, which has been worked for over 20 years in a row, but hasn't been worked as much for the past couple of years, it has oil leaking everywhere, which is absolutely normal when you don't use an industrial machine for long periods of time because it is meant to be used quite frequently look at my gorgeous setup i have in here so this table previously was switched the other way around and was instead somewhere in between actually of those two tables but now it's here i have my regular chair in here and my dad gave me a new one for the sewing machine so it's now working we had an electrician come up and fix everything and just if you're curious he fixed it with a condensator i'm not sure if that's exactly the same in english and i can't really reach it from here i don't think so you won't be able to see it because it's hidden pretty well but it's essentially like a, this big white thingy that converts 380 voltage to 220 so that we could actually work this machine from our regular electricity sockets i'm gonna add the thread so that i could sew and i will start mocking everything up i'm actually gonna begin with constructing a second mock-up for tunnel the designer that i'm working for and then i'm gonna try to work the machine with uh, organza yeah, i'm gonna have to adjust the thread tension and the stitch length to see whether or not it's gonna work with this one i bought it from kanga jungle outlet as every fabric that i have right now i bought just one meter or half a meter actually of this organza i'll test different finishes out and if i like it i'm gonna go back to kanga jungle and buy the proper amount for look number five so that i could start without actually waiting for the package from moscow to arrive because it is again taking way longer than we were expecting it to 
just got an update from Dover that the courier from UPS just picked up the package. Everything's been fine sent out. It should arrive within the next couple of days and I'm fingers crossed like nothing's gonna go wrong. I'm very hopeful. Everything is there. So the first time around when he sent the package, turned out that we forgot to put some things inside of it and we had to ask the uh, courier to come back on Monday, so today. And he had everything, like we were video chatting the whole way through. We took some things out, put some things in and now it's sent out, everything's gonna go great. Hopefully I'm gonna construct enough stuff to be able to construct my collection in time because our deadline has been moved to 20th of August somewhat that time. We also got an update regarding our exhibition. Apparently university sent us a questionnaire to fill out whether or not we're ready by the 20th of August and all the fashion department was like no hell no hell no we need more time so I really hope that I'll be able to actually manage the collection timing but if not I'm just gonna have to push myself even further. But I'll be focusing on two things at the same time and just waiting for the package I'll do my best to actually construct the mock-ups for his collection first of all. Despite the fact that our UPS package got picked up the same day that we asked the courier to come, it still is taking way longer than we were expecting. So it was supposed to arrive yesterday evening and it didn't because on customs on the border of Russia apparently we have not filled the invoice correctly. We filled it the same way that as we did for the original company that we started, the FedEx. And then they started sending us multiple new questions just exactly the same way as FedEx was doing it. So it wasn't their fault, it was the customs fault and Russian system generally so we're filling essentially the same questions, changing everything, adding every little minute detail that we can possibly add to that shipping information. So again, hoping that it's going to arrive anytime soon. I can basically focus on working for Tunnel at this point and trying to figure out that organza fabric that I just said. But I am very worried because my groupmates have done a shitload of work and I am yet to start. That's scary. So I don't know what I'm going to be doing. The first sample I tried on was already grey so I didn't have to print with that colour, just printed with black ink, trying to save up a little bit of money on the actual ink waste which didn't really matter in the long run. I tested a second sample with just on white uh, cotton and it didn't transfer really well but I had to fill it in with grey colour at the whole print itself and it isn't really visible here at all. I just came back from Congo Jungle outlet and I bought 6 meters of that fabric that I had done the tester on. So as you've seen in a previous clip, this tester turned out quite well and I love the fact that the black Blacks are actually so vibrant and it's because this uh, cotton is soaked with something synthetic that's why it has this vibrant colour and I bought six meters of it which accounted for like 36 euros I think which I think one meter of a fabric would have originally cost me about the same amount so I'm super happy about that obviously 36 euros is quite a lot for just one look but it's going to be quite dramatic and it's going to be my final piece so I want it to be this dramatic and beautiful so I've changed my plans I'm not going to be able to sew this uh, look number six in Estonia because it's going to be too expensive I already bought the netting and the netting itself was about 30 euros so this look in itself is already quite expensive like more expensive than I would have loved it to be and the printing would have been 80 euros in the minimum and I'm not ready to pay for this look so much and I wanted to print in Moscow so that's what I'm going to be doing and I'm going to leave it for Moscow itself. So the package I'm hoping that has been sent it's going to arrive today and in the tracking information it said that it would come in the afternoon so I'm crossing my fingers for that and if it does arrive today I'm going to be able to start my trousers for look number three which were quite dramatic and sculptural and insert the photo here and if that is the case I'll start with those then I'm going to go to the sewing studio where we got the sewing machine for myself from and I'm going to be able to use their overlocker and their special like jersey machine which will help me finish the jersey tops that I have on all the other looks. I do recognize that there's a lot of work especially once the actual fabrics come out from Moscow and I'm going to have to work triple the amount because I'm a little behind from all the girls that have already started their work in Moscow and yesterday we had a zoom chat for the tutor and they basically showed what they've done and it isn't too much like I'm not too panicky but it is enough for me to be worried about the amount of time that is left and if I'm able to go back to Moscow somewhere in the beginning of August that would mean that I have about like 20 days or 10 days depending on what date I arrive before the exhibition so look number six is what I'm going to be working on when I come back to Moscow so I'm probably going to have to one of the looks which would probably be look number four because it's so complicated because we discussed with our cheetah on that zoom chat yesterday that during the exhibition we are not expected to produce all the pieces and we're not expected to show all of them so we are allowed to just take one or two looks out and focus on the ones that we feel are the most important for the collection so maybe I'm not gonna be able to produce look number five for the exhibition but I'm definitely gonna be making it for the wrong way if that still happens so fingers crossed again like I'm crossing my fingers a million times you already heard me say that a million times so let's hope everything works out 
Since receiving this beautiful sewing machine, my room has become partly a sleeping place and also a workroom. And it is a mess. It's just so awful. Let me show you. Everything, every fabric, every piece of work is now together with a bag for a camera, with my different bags that I take home. This is a bag with fabrics that my employer gave me, some old papers, like a beanbag chair, whatever, old fabrics that I'm not using, and just a lot of different stuff. Those are like my scrapbooks from middle school, I think. They're there's a lot of stuff that has to be moved and since this is now my workroom I'm gonna rework it and make it into something comfortable to use. Action for now is moving all of those to the top shelf of the wardrobe which I'm also gonna have to reorganize because it is a mess. I am also gonna move those shelves out, clean those out and probably all the art materials are gonna go up the stairs so up the next shelf. Then this bottom drawer is gonna be scrap fabrics that I'm not really using but I'm gonna just roll them nicely so that they don't look this ugly. This shelf is gonna become a place for fabrics that I am actively using and I'm also gonna change out this little scrap jar for something larger so like a scrap basket because I'm using a lot of fabrics and I'm not throwing any piece of fabric out because I'm definitely gonna be using them later on. Probably out of some of those scraps I'm gonna make this little band to go around the sewing machine so that I could put the pins inside of because I think I forgot all of my pin cushions in Moscow so I'm gonna move all those things out. Still gonna have to leave one of the shelves for just regular stuff like bags and different things that I'm using throughout the day and I think those wire mesh that I bought for look number six is gonna go just up the shelf and all this crap is also gonna go into the drawer. just arrived i'm sorry if i busted your headphones but here is my package it's way less heavy than it was supposed to be in the beginning because we took a lot of stuff out but oh my god it's here look just yesterday we were discussing all of the details and everything had to be stopped again i was so worried that today they were not going to send anything again but it turned out it's here I am so excited. I haven't seen those fabric in ages, it feels like. And I have my leather, genuine leather, that I've actually deassembled from an old leather jacket that I bought online. And actually, I bought it from, like, Avita, which is an online marketplace for anything, basically. I bought a beautiful red leather jacket, and I've kept the pockets. And if you've seen my older vlogs, where I've actually shown you how I top-stitched it, you can check them out. I'll link them down below as well. And I have like little off cuts and strips to test things out on top of. This is a top semi-final version from the leftover upcycled fake leather. In my final design, I have a different color and I think I might have to construct a different one because this one is pinned. So I do have some leverage with this so that I can actually finish top for look number two. I'm so excited. I have my prints down. Like the only problem with this package was the fact that it was so small, the box was so small that they had to actually fold my prints which obviously results in a crease down the middle but despite my worries i don't think it has transferred that badly i don't think the color has left that crease so i think we might be able to salvage it without any problem as i mentioned before they are going to be very pixelized which i don't mind because i'm printing on mesh and i think as long as i keep them stored flat they are going to be printed pretty well so that's my next plan of action i'll take them upstairs and flatten them out maybe on my bed or something to have them flattened hopefully with no damage to the actual print but because i was ready for the print to be damaged i'm not even that worried about it anymore i'm so happy i'm such a high today in 10 minutes i'm gonna have lunch and i'm gonna leave my house to go wakeboarding with my friends and that's probably gonna be one of the last outings that i'm gonna have for the next while before i leave to moscow i'm so excited i now have to balance working for tunnel and working on my degree collection at the same time because before that i could have a little bit of free time and now it's a bit of a challenge but i'm ready to to take it on i am super excited to finally start sewing my degree collection and i'm gonna have to figure out what i'm gonna start with if i want to start with the skirts i'm gonna have to find a way to press those embedded uh, paper clips because I'm not sure whether or not that's going to be possible to do in the final thing and I think that's a bit dangerous in case that leather shrinks so I might have to start it right now but I'm going to have to ask my girls to make a video chat call uh, tomorrow when they're in the studio so that I can ask our technician for advice I think our regular technician is now on vacation so it's going to be a bit more challenging asking someone else but we have great technicians there nonetheless so they're going to be helping me via zoom that's going to be very exciting so let's see how that works out
So besides the fabrics in that box, I had a lot of prints and patterns in there and I am actually less worried about what is going on in here right now than I was before it got sent to me. Look, the creases are there, they're prevalent, obviously we're not avoiding them, but they're not that bad. And I'm obviously going to do a couple of tests. I printed multiple of those neck piece areas because I'm making a tassel neck on most of my jumpsuits. And sorry, by the way, about the quality and filming on my phone because my camera just died in the most important moment of my day. <laughs> so you see a couple of front options, sleeve options, then a front foot in different color. Those pieces are printed to print on the side because I'm not exactly sold on how wide this actual top area is. So I just printed those extra just in case I have to overprint the side area. Even though I'm printing on jersey and it is going to stretch about the, uh, over the body, I tried to account for the fact that I might mess up the sizing and I just printed those just in case. Although I just checked myself out in a mirror with those patterns alongside my body, I think they're pretty good. Like obviously they're a bit wider than myself, but I'm trying to position this print somewhat like logically. I want the bust area to be in the bust area, even though it's a bit wider. So if you could check out the side, it would obviously mean that I have a lot of empty space in here. So I printed those side boob areas just to have an overprint in here. Those are my legging patterns. You can see that this is a booty area, this is like a side part and this is the front. I'll try to print them out and actually sew the piece accordingly. And this joint section is for gathered underpants area, if you remember how the sketch looked like, but I'll show you on the screen right now. So I have itty bitty butt in here, look at this. So I'm so excited, I just can't. I'm gonna press them down a little bit under probably a bunch of books that I just reorganized from that section, which are now in my wardrobe, by the way, I don't think I filmed it yesterday, so they're here and the whole wardrobe is now much cleaner. So I'll just press everything down and probably start right away tomorrow. I am so excited. I'm gonna start my trousers for look number three pattern right away because Lova deserves the best boyfriend ever award because he not only had to deal with uh, sending that package and readjusting different information a million times but also he traced patterns for me so he traced jersey bodies blog jersey legging blog for me so happy to have him thank you so much lova you're the best i also wanted to say a huge thank you to the girls because thank you anna you were helping lova so much i remember you filmed me a couple of backstage clips of him tracing things so mila anna elisa i think as well like everyone thank you so much masha you're the best thank you i am super happy to have this support team along my side my dad my boyfriend my group mates everyone's been helping me so much along this journey and i know that this is a bit challenging but matrita claire she also mentioned like look this is how typically fashion industry works like nothing goes to plan and you usually can't see the product until you're f until it's finished sometimes you have to travel you can't really be in the production facility so it's sort of like a tester for an actual fashion industry work process i'm quite interested in how that turns out but i am very excited i can now officially start my collection yay i still can't believe that the package is here can you believe that it took so long thank you so much for waiting with me and watching this video and now you're actually going to be getting your money's worth getting pattern making content videos of the production process and things i change along the way sewing the project i'm very happy that i can finally start sewing so stay tuned and see you next week bye